like to do really briefly is to touch on um, an area of the Women's Project research which I'm developing with David Brown, which relates to um, what Chris was saying right at the beginning of his presentation about public engagement. Um, engaging public attitudes around imprisonment is both about engaging politicians and, um, and media about the way that prison issues are portrayed, but it's also about dealing with the way that the public more generally um, understands and um, is presented with prison-related issues. And it's often remarked that ideas about imprisonment in the public are um, based less on direct experience of the prison and more on various uh, media and other popular sources uh, and portrayals of imprisonment. This is of course less true in situations where there's mass imprisonment of particular uh, sectors of the population in Australia, particularly the Indigenous population where 20% of Indigenous children have a, a parent or a carer in prison. But for the general population, um, their ideas about prisons are informed less by a direct experience of what prison is and more by the um, representations of the prison that they see in the, in the popular media and in the news. So today, um, what I'd like to briefly do is to give a real a, a taste of three, I've chosen three Australian prison films um, from three different eras in, um, in filmmaking. Um, the first is Stir, which is a 1980 film. The second is called Ghosts of the Civil Dead, made in 1988. And the third is called Chopper, which is a 2000 film. Can you hand up if you've seen any of those films? What goes to the Civil Dead? Ghosts of the Civil Dead. You picked up one. Um, so, and what I'd like to do with these three films is firstly to just uh, introduce it to them as briefly as I can. Um, to look at what images of the prison it portrays, to locate them in their historical and social content, context, but also to look at them against Michelle Brown's notion of, of penal spectatorship from her book, The Culture of Punishment. Just to spend a moment on, on Brown's notion of penal spectatorship, this is a, a quote from, from her. Penal spectatorship foregrounds the fact that for both of us without direct connections to formal institutions of punishment, a kind of experiential distance defines our relationship to its practice. Such, such distance shields us first and foremost from the most fundamental feature of punishment, its infliction of pain. Brown is concerned with to explore penal subjectivity by which she means the way in which performances of punishment, this is also a quote, when distant from actual punishment, nevertheless provide frameworks for ordinary citizens to step into or out of self-conscious modes of awareness as moral spectators and deliberative citizens. So Brown's argument challenges all of us to consider and act on our own complicity in the practice of punishment and identify the conditions under which both such recognition and failure to recognise take place. So I'll touch on the way that um, each of these three films position the viewer as a subject engaged in the process of reflection on the themes that that they present, and, um, and what we want to do is ask how these particular films work to construct or hide the recognition of penal spectatorship and its moral and political implications. Okay, so the first um, movie is, is Stir. Um, Stir is uh, an activist representational film that was made in, uh, to portray the lead up to a riot that took place in the, the Baptist prison in New South Wales. It was scripted by um, somebody who had been a prisoner in, at the time that the riot took place. And Mathis Jail um, was built in the last quarter of the 19th century and was typical of prisons used for convicts during British settlement. Windows without glass, uh, prisoners spending 18 or so hours um, per day in, the, in their cells exposed to the elements. So Brian Brown in this film plays China Jackson who has, after a spell on the outside, is coming back into the prison, uh, where last time he was there he was savagely bashed. And, and while he was out in the community he's tried to sort of create some um, public awareness of the, the plight of these prisoners who are being sort of wholesale bashed by the guards in, in the prison, but to no effect. 
he's determined to stay out of trouble while he's in prison, but as things deteriorate and, and um, tensions escalate, he finds himself drawn into um, the goings on, and ultimately there's a riot and the prison guards open fire on the inmates. <coughs> Stories bound up with the emergence of the prisoner as a political subject which took place in the 1960s and 70s and the way the prisoner resistance that would take place in prisons um, in Australia at that time. The events that are depicted in the prison contributed to the establishment of the um, arguably the most important um, inquiry into the prison system in Australian history, the Naval Royal Commission. Um, and, and the Royal Commission looked particularly at the events that took place in, um, in Baptist prison and, and had a range of findings which I'll come into. So at the very beginning of the film, really the opening sequence of the film, China Jackson is seen in prison transport being taken back um, to prison and he's talking about um, the futility of airing prisoners' rights issues in the community. As he puts it, no one gives a fucking fuck about crews. So it positions the, the viewer right at the beginning of the film as um, to, to enter Michelle Brown's um, self-conscious mode of awareness as moral spectator, to ask themselves about their complicity, about a, a, a society that turns a, a blind or actively uncaring eye to the plight of, of the prisoner being abused in jail. So I'll just show you that one for sure. Can you see? Mm -hmm. I'm happy to see you there. Partridge. From there, dangerous swine are coming. Right. Now, he's a senior swine. Yeah, well, I'd like to blow his sick letter head off his fucking shoulders. I don't know how you feel. There's just no way I'm going to do life over a bastard like him. That's the only thing they understand. It's a little bit of the ways, mate. Yeah, well, I tried the other ways, and all the good I did was sell more fucking newspapers. There's just no way I'm going to do life over a screw. You know, it was the only thing I understand. Because those bastards out there, the newspapers, a lot don't get one fucking fuck way out of the crims. The film also nods to the issue of penal spectatorship more generally. In this case, the lack of information in the community about the prison and <coughs> the fear of the prison. Um, and of prisoners that it generates. There's a conversation between um, a remorseful guard and, and um, Brian Brown's character about the way that the guard um, understood prison before he came in. And it's just an interesting little moment in the movie because it really uh, presents that sort of nexus point between um, not knowing and, and, and knowing and, um, and therefore a kind of the, the move from penal, penal spectatorship to a more a grounded understanding of the prison. Yeah, when I started working here 16 years ago, I was pretty scared. Um, avant-garde 
semi-documentary type of film that's based on the emergence of, this, of second generation now called Supermax Prisons. Um, the film says at the beginning that the movie is based on actual events that took place in, um, in America and in Australia and this clearly um, draws on events from Marion in Illinois and foreshadowing events um, at Victoria's Petridge Prison and at Katingal in New South Wales. The film has all of the trappings of the, of the prison film genre, the acts of extreme violence, um, prison brutality in prison and, and brutality particularly by the, the prison administration, but it presents a much broader indictment of penal trends from the late 1980s onwards, including the rise of uh, the just desserts approach to punishment and the trend as part of that towards high security facilities using cutting edge technology rather than any meaningful form of human interaction that align with dynamic security to manage the prison population. There's a total lack of hero in the movie and a total lack of redemption, um, which reflects to some extent the more general shift um, in penal culture from a rehabilitative ideal um, through to the sense that nothing works. The film takes place in the central industrial prison. It's been in a state of lockdown for um, the last 37 months, which means all inmates are, are pretty much confined to their cells 23 hours of the day. Um, and a body called the Committee on the Judiciary has commissioned a report to inquire into the causes of the lockdown. The, the, the hour and a half that follows chronicles um, a facility where the prisoners are kept um, occupied with the collaboration of the staff through drugs, TV and porn to just sort of keep things quiet. At a certain point, um, the higher administration comes in, removes not only the contraband but um, all personal possessions, access to um, outside recreation is shut down and there's a cage built um, inside the prison for, for the purposes of recreation. But the film that I'm going to show shows the deterioration of prison conditions and relations between inmates and staff as tension escalates. But it also provides a useful summary of the thematic thrust of the film in terms of the capacity of a brutal prison system to create dangerous people who will pose serious threats to the community on release. Uh, notice also the theme which recurs from Stir, we didn't get to talk about it, but of the literal ignoring of the prisoner's voice um, even though his complaints are ones that the viewer knows to be substantiated by an external person who uh, or a figure representing the outside world. Um, here, in one of the film's rare depictions of the interface between inside and outside, what's clear is the willful blindness on the part of the observer to know what is clearly the case. So, using the distance afforded by penal spectatorship coupled with the powerless of, powerlessness of the prisoner as a shield against consciousness of the conditions suffered. Okay, so let's have a watch. 